With Dying Light 2 just releasing around a month ago, I figured now is a great time now that I've finished and done a lot in the game to compare it with Dying Light 1, as that's another game I really enjoy and who doesn't like a little needless competition. Plus, maybe I can help some of you decide which game to get. But I'm just gonna save you the trouble, I really like both of these games and I would definitely recommend either of them. But just in case you are new to this series of mine, what I do is take two games from the same series and I compare them in three different categories being story, gameplay, and the open world. Now normally I would do individual subcategories with points and all that, but for Dying Light I'm going to go with another system. Instead for each category I'm going to give each game a rating out of 10 and add up the ratings at the end and whichever game has the highest score out of 30 will be crowned the better game. And don't worry about keeping score, I'll have a scoreboard at the top of the screen. Now hopefully that all makes sense, I'm not always the best at explaining this stuff, but let's get into the comparison. Round one, fight! We're gonna start with the stories for these Dying Light games. Now let's be real, most of us play these games for the addicting gameplay, the parkour, the combat, all of that. But of course, story is still very important, even if it isn't always the best. I'm gonna start with talking about the story from the first game, which I found decent. Some of the characters are kind of generic. Kyle Crane doesn't have a lot of personality or defining character traits that I feel a protagonist should, and he doesn't have much depth to him. Really, his whole struggle is around deciding between joining and helping the survivors, or remaining loyal to the GRE and effectively screwing over the survivors. The main antagonist of the game, Rice, I had very similar issues with. Not a lot of depth or motivations. There is a little backstory about how he went insane after the death of his brother, but that wasn't expanded upon too much. There are definitely some strong side characters like Jade and Raheem, and the plot overall is still engaging, especially towards the end, but certainly nothing so fantastic and memorable. People remember dying long light for the gameplay, not so much the story. It's still decent, I suppose, and it has its moments. I'm gonna give it a 6 out of 10 for the story. Dying Light 2 uses a fairly similar formula as the first game. I said this in my review of Dying Light 2, but Aiden Caldwell, the protagonist, reminds me a lot of Kyle Crane. I mean, they even sound fairly similar. However, I do believe Aiden is a better character for numerous reasons. For one, I feel he's a little more animated and emotional during intense story moments. He has a little more personality to him, and he has much clearer personal motivations in the story. He's looking for his long-lost sister Mia, and he has a direct connection and hatred for the game's antagonist Waltz, since he's the one who experimented on him and Mia when they were kids. There's more stakes, more history there with the two characters than there ever was between Crane and Rice. I still think Aiden could have used even more character, maybe a little more insight into his life as a pilgrim and what he did in the years leading up to the beginning of the game, but I get it, and the story was long enough as is. There's some really great standout side characters. Lawan was definitely my favorite. Such a complicated and rich character. Hakon was another good one. I just felt it was a lot easier to get invested into the characters of this story as opposed to the first game. It's still nowhere near perfect, but a definite improvement. So I'll give Dying Light 2's story an 8 out of 10. <laughs> I'll say it right off the bat, the gameplay in both of these games are phenomenal and feel great across the board. The first game built such a good, solid foundation with the parkour, the combat, that it made it easy for Dying Light 2 to improve upon it and make it even better. I'm not sure if all the changes they made were entirely necessary, like the new sprint system, but I overall liked the change, even if I don't think there was anything wrong with it in the first game. The biggest changes I think came with the combat and stealth though. Being able to manually block and do perfect block blocks was a really nice addition. There's a ton of more moves and parkour combat, which looks great. There's more customization and upgrades available for all the different melee weapons. I know the removal of guns is kind of controversial among people. I personally agree with the decision to remove guns in Dying Light 2. Not to say they were terrible in the first game or anything, but they felt a little out of place and a lot of the late game situations turned into a standard first person shooter and lost a little of what made Dying Light so unique. So I was completely fine 
combined with the removal of guns. Stealth is also a viable option now in Dying Light 2. In the first game, you could do takedowns on enemies from behind, and you could use the camouflage feature, and that was about the extent of the stealth system. It was hardly effective and not really worth attempting. In Dying Light 2, stealth is definitely more fleshed out. With a consistent detection system, knife takedowns, chain takedowns, aerial and ledge takedowns, it's still a simple system, but it's actually viable now. As for the changes to the parkour, again, I think parkour in the first game was fantastic, and I don't feel many of the changes they made for Dying Light 2 were completely necessary, but I will say the parkour felt a lot smoother, even if it does look a little more floaty and unrealistic. The addition of climbing stamina kind of annoyed me at first as well, but once I got it upgraded, it was fine. The new Night Runner tools in Dying Light 2 were great additions, the paraglider easily being my favorite, allowing you to zip around the city, not to mention all the upgrades you can make to it. It fits in with the game and its world design really well. So again, I love the gameplay from the first game, but Dying Light 2 just straight up improved upon it and added some fun new tools and mechanics. So I'm going to give the first game an 8 out of 10 for gameplay and the second game a 9 out of 10. For me, one of the most notable changes from the first Dying Light to Dying Light 2 is in the world and setting. The first game takes place in Haran and Sector Zero, while 2 takes place in Villador starting in the old outskirts and then the central loop slash downtown area. Villador is an absolutely stunning world. It's a lot more interesting and colorful than Haran. The architecture, the design, the verticality with those massive skyscrapers that you can actually climb by the way. It's bigger, it's richer, the design for the parkour is fantastic. I just love everything they did with Villador. The city itself, I feel, has more personality, if that makes sense. I really enjoyed Haran too, even though if it doesn't look or feel quite as good stylistically as Villador, it still had good parkour design, allowing you to jump across rooftops and all that. In Sector Zero was a nice change of pace and refresher, getting this big new city to explore towards the later parts of the game, which is what Dying Light 2 does as well with Old Villador and the Central Loop. There's also a lot of new activities to do in Villador as opposed to Haran. The windmills, power stations, of course the safe zones are still the same. Outposts, antennas, dark zones, and GRE anomalies. There's so much more to do than just your typical side quest. I also really like the changes made to the night cycle. The nighttime in the first game was already really good and quite scary honestly with those volatiles, but there's a lot more depth and reward from it in Dying Light 2. The dark zones that can be easily looted at night, the four level chases, of course the double XP, which was in the first game as well. I found myself actually going out and playing during the nighttime a lot more in the second game than I did in the first. But there's also more risk with that as well, since you have an immunity timer now. There's just a lot more depth to Villador, and overall, the world of Dying Light 2 is phenomenal. I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10. I really enjoyed Haran and Sector Zero as well, but it's not on the same level as what they did with Villador, so I'll give it an 8 out of 10. That leaves us with a final score of Dying Light 1, a solid 22 points, and Dying Light 2 with 27 points, leaving Dying Light 2 as the winner and the better game. Keep in mind, this was of course all my opinion, which as you know is always right and never, ever, never, ever, ever wrong. But of course, feel free to leave which game you think is better and how you would score them in the comments. If you want to hear me go more in depth on both of the games individually, I'll leave links in the description to my review of Dying Light 2 and and for Dying Light 1, which I just reviewed about a month ago as well. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. We're so close to 100k, which means the world to me. So thank you so much, everybody, and have a great rest of your day.